Hello and welcome to our 16th video lecture. Today we continue our discussion on highway capacity and quality of service. In our previous class, we started with the basics, with the definition of different levels of service, and we also introduced different steps that you need to go through in order to find the level of service on a basic freeway segments. Today, I will continue that discussion. We will go through the two remaining steps of measuring the level of service and we also go through one example to make sure that we learn everything a little bit more clearly. In step three, we want to calculate the analysis flow rate and that's this V sub P that we are showing in this equation here. So a few things that um, we want to talk about is that the unit of the analysis flow rate is passenger car per hour per lane. And usually we show it uh, like this passenger car per hour per lane and you can see it also here now what I want to highlight here is that this is in per lane unit so as a result you can see that I'm dividing V which is our our hourly volume total hourly volume across all lanes by the number of lanes so this division by n is giving us the per lane flow rate also think about hourly volume that we measure in hourly volume you count the number of vehicles you don't care if they are passenger cars or if they are trucks or buses or rvs so here everything is, is in passenger cars so these are equivalent passenger or number of passenger cars per hour per lane that is equivalent to the total number of vehicles that we have and to create that equivalency we divide v by f sub hv and if you look at phf you have seen this before here we have the total hourly volume and when we design or analyze we want to look into 15 minute flow rate or um, in other words we want to find the 15 minute peak uh, 15 minutes that has the highest volume or peak volume and we want to convert that one to an hourly flow rate so for that purpose we divide what we have here by phf and f sub p is a factor that accounts for familiar familiarity of the driver so in a way when you look at this the only factor that uh, factor here that could be more than one is n all other factors are either equal to one or less than that okay so i'm going to go through different steps now and i talk a little bit more about phf not much more because we have seen it uh, in chapter five then i talk about f sub hv and f sub p so phf as you have seen before the way that we calculate it is that we divide the hourly volume by the 15 or the maximum 15 minute volume so this is max 15 minute volume and this is within the peak hour in the peak hour So if you want to determine PHF, you have seen that we have a table and we can determine that. 
a lot of times that is given to us so it's just an input that we go and we put in the previous equation we plug it in in the previous equation so f sub hv this is an adjustment factor that converts a mixed traffic volume of passenger cars heavy vehicles and rvs to an equivalent passenger car volume so p sub t here is proportion of uh, single unit and tractor trailer tra tractor trailer heavy vehicles in the traffic stream so for example if 10 percent of your cars or trucks p sub t would be 0.1 e sub t is passenger car equivalent of one heavy vehicle in the traffic stream so if you have rvs you have again the proportion of rvs and their equivalency factor so the idea here is that we would say that a truck is equivalent to e sub t passenger cars so if i want to attach numbers to this for example a truck is equivalent to three cars so what you do indirectly with this equation is that for each truck that you have you assume that you have three passenger cars so if you have 100 passenger cars and two trucks and if your e sub t is 2 your passenger car equivalent volume is 100 plus e sub t which is 2 multiplied by another 2 which is the number of trucks that you have so you're going to have 104 passenger cars or you can just use this equation and it's going to give you f sub hv then you need to divide v by f sub hv and you find the equivalent volume so here i want to do an example we have a total traffic volume that consists passenger cars and heavy vehicles on a freeway lane which is 1000 vehicles per hour if we assume that heavy heavy vehicle percentage is 10 and each heavy vehicle is equivalent to 2.5 cars what is the equivalent traffic volume in passenger cars per hour um, so i would like for you guys to pause the video here try to solve this problem you can go with the concept of equivalency factor or use the equation that you saw on the previous slide to solve this and then on pause and then we go from there okay so let's start going through this example and first i just want to solve it conceptually so we have 1000 vehicles per hour and we know that 10 percent of them are trucks so let's find the number of trucks number of trucks would be 1000 multiplied by 10 percent or 0.1 so we have 100 trucks in the traffic stream and what is the number of passenger cars so if out of those 1000 100 100 of them are trucks 1000 minus 100 we are going to have 900 passenger cars right so i know how many passenger cars we have we have 900 i know how many trucks we have so let's now convert these 100 trucks to passenger car equivalents so we know that the equivalency factor is 2.5 so what you need to do is that you need to multiply the number of trucks by 2.5 so that means that 100 trucks are equivalent to 250 passenger cars so what is the total number of passenger cars we have 900 actual passenger cars plus 250 passenger cars that are equivalent to 100 trucks so the total number would be 900 plus 250 or 1150 we can rather than finding this number going through this conceptual approach you can just plug it into the equation so f sub hv is 1 over 1 plus pt into et minus 1 
ET is 0.1. Uh, sorry, PT is 0.1, ET is 2.5. So 1 over 0.1 into 2 minus 5 minus 1. That is going to give you 1 over 1.15 or 0.8696. So that is our F sub HV. If you want to find your volume, you just need to divide the hourly volume by this number that you just found. So if you do so, you get an identical 1150 passenger cars per hour that is equivalent to having 1000 cars, 1000 vehicles per hour when 10% of them are heavy vehicles and each vehicle is equivalent to 2.5 cars. So up to this point it's quite straightforward what is a little bit challenging is to find the value of e sub t here the value of 2.5 was given to you but this value is not always given and you need to determine it and it's a fact it's a function of uh, how steep the road is how long the vehicles are going to travel on that how um, what percentage of vehicles on that road are heavy vehicles and factors like that. So let's look into those now. So we have three different types of segments. Uh, for those three types of segments, we have different ways of determining E sub T. The easiest one is extended general freeway segments. These are segments that are not too steep or if they are steep, they are really short. And for these ones, we have a uh, nice table with just a few numbers that are gonna give us uh, what value of E sub T we should be using. But if your grades are not short, or are steep and long, then they are either specific upgrades or specific downgrades. And these are tables that give you E sub T as a function of length of the curve, um, slope, percentage of heavy vehicles, and so on. So we are gonna start with this, then we talk about this one, and finally we we talk about specific downgrades. So let's first talk about the definition of extended, extended general freeway segments. So these are, as I mentioned to you, are grades that are not too steep. If they are steep, they are short. And if they are not that steep and um, a little bit longer but not not too long so these are grades that you have no one grade of three percent or greater that is longer than half a mile a quarter of a mile so if you have a grade grade that is three percent or greater than that it has to be shorter than one quarter of a mile if you have a grade a, a grade that is less than three percent it can be up to half a mile but not longer than that so then in a way let's say if you have a grade that is four percent it has to be shorter than a quarter of a mile if you have a grade that is 2.5 percent that could be up to half a mile and if the combination of grades that you have all of them are like this then you have an extended general freeway segment so if you have that condition, you either have a level train or a rolling train. What is a level train? Level train is the type of train that heavy vehicles um, performance is not gonna is not affected by the grade that much, and they can maintain more or less the speed that they have. Typically, these are grades that are uh, less than 2%. So if you have a level train, your E sub T is 2. If you have a rolling train, so these are um, 
combination of grades that are still within extended um, general free base segment definition, but they reduce the speed of passing of, of, of um, heavy vehicles uh, and they can bring it really down but not exactly to the cross speed okay so if you have a combination of grades that reduces the speed but does not take it below crawl speed you have a rolling uh, train and your equivalency factor or e sub t is 3. so what if you don't have an extended general freeway segment so for specific upgrades or downgrades we have a number of tables that we can use and here i just show you an example of specific upgrade and for the rest you can take a look at the book and on the exam if you need to use any of those tables i'm going to give it to you so in these uh, tables you can see that uh, maybe we look at this table on the top we have um, something that says 30% SUT, 70% TT, or you have 50% SUT and 50% TT. What is a SUT? It's a single unit tractor or truck, and TT is a tractor trailer. So this is a TT, this is a single unit truck, this is a tractor trailer, and Either you have 30% single unit trucks, 70% tractor trailers, 50-50, or different combinations. And for each of those combinations, it's not too many of them, but there are several combinations of these. You have tables like this. So this table have two combinations, either 50-50 or 30% SUT, 70% TT. So you need to know this combination. And then you can see that here on the table, let me, yeah, here on the table, you see percentage of trucks. So you can either have 2%, 5%, 10%, and so on. So let me also add a line here so that we know that, oops. You know that these two sides are separate from each other okay you are either on the right hand side or left hand side now we have the grade so the grade is shown here that could be any of these numbers and if you have a grade that you don't see the number here you need to interpolate and then you also have the lengths here. So how this is going to work? We are going to have something like a 2.5%. I'm giving you just an example here. 2.5% upgrade. The length of the grade, let's say, is 1.25 miles and you have 10% trucks and the distribution of trucks is 50% single unit trucks 50% tractor trailer so what that means is that we are on the right hand side okay so i have 10% heavy vehicles so i'm looking at this column here and the percentage of heavy vehicles is 2.5, so I am here. And the length is 1.25, so I am here. And you can see that the number that I'm looking at is 2.73. That is our E sub t. Okay, sometimes we have a combination of specific grades. For example, you have something like this, and then followed by this, and so on. So we don't talk about this in this course, but there are a few approaches. 
um, that we can use to determine an equivalent grade with this length and um, you can see those in the highway capacity manual or in your book but we don't uh, worry about them in here you can just review this slide on your own so again if you have your e sub t if you have your p sub t you know f sub hv now here this is the percentage of rvs equivalency factor of rvs if you don't have any rv this is zero as a result of that this whole thing is zero and your equation is going to be reduced to one over one plus pt into e sub t minus one driver population or f sub p ranges between one and 0.85 so if all of your drivers are familiar you use a value of one if none of them are familiar you use a value of 0.85 and for anything else you need to use your engineering judgment to see how the drivers are familiar or how much the drivers are familiar so with these all factors you can find now your analysis flow rate um, or v sub p you have seen this before which is v divided by phf into number of lanes into f sub hv into f sub p so we cover all of these parameters here so the last step after you determine your v sub p is to determine the density so we know from fundamental relationship between flow and speed that flow is equal to speed multiplied by density so what that means is that density is equal to flow divided by speed so that is what I have here density is equal to flow divided by speed we learned how to determine v sub p or flow we talked about free flow speed but we never talked about how to determine the speed so for that we have a couple of approaches there are equations that you can use to determine speed as a function of v sub p or there are graphs that we can use to determine s as a function of v sub p sometimes if v sub p is so small s ends up being equal to free flow speed but that is not necessarily the case so one of the common mistakes that i see is that uh, someone is going to assume that s is identical to free flow speed that is not necessarily the case so let's see how we can find the value of s or speed so we can use this figure that we have here in in this figure the way that you determine the speed is that you need to know the analysis flow rate this is v sub p so based on v sub p we can find the speed but we also need to know the free flow speed because for each free flow speed we have a different curve okay so let's say your free flow speed is 75 miles per hour and your v sub p is equal to 500 so what we do is that we know that we need to use this curve because free flow speed is 75 miles per hour so if you want to find speed you need to find v sub p of 500 you just go up until you hit the free flow speed curve of 75 and then when you hit that you go until you find the speed that you are interested in so here because my v sub p was so small um, the s ended up being equal to free flow speed of 75 miles per hour well let's do another example so let's say that my free flow speed is still 75 miles per hour but my v sub p is 2000 so now 
you need to start from 2000, go all the way up until you hit the curve of 75 miles per hour, that is this curve. Now you need to go horizontally until you hit the y-axis and that gives you speed of 65 miles per hour. And for different values of Visa P and free flow speed, you can end up using different curves. For example, if in a, <coughs> excuse me, in a different example, if our free flow speed is 60 miles per hour and our Visa P is still 2000, so I'm going to go up from here until I hit the 65 mile per hour curve, which is this point. This is that curve. So then I go all the way here and my speed is going to be equal to 60 miles per hour. So here, that's how we determine speed. And then in the equation that I showed you on the previous slide, you have V sub P, you have S, you can determine density. When you have density, you go to this table based on the value of the, of the density that you have on the right hand side of the table, you can determine the free flow, uh, the level of service. For example, if your density is 28, you are here, the level of service would be D. If it is 35, you are still here and your level of service is D. If you go to 36, your level of service is going to go to E and so on. So here I have one example that is going to cover everything that we talked about today. I want you to pause it here. Um, this is going to take you probably something in the order of 10 to 15 minutes at least to go through. Try to go through it all the way and then I'll pause the video and then we go and solve the problem together. So we have a six lane urban freeway. That means that we have three lanes in each direction. And this freeway is on rolling train. It has 11 feet lanes, obstruction two feet from the right edge of the traveled pavement and nine ramps within three miles upstream and three miles downstream of the middle point of the analysis segment. Traffic stream consists of primarily commuters. So when you have mostly commuters, that means that they are familiar with the road. So your F sub P is one. A directional weekday peak hour of 2300 vehicles per hour is observed. And out of those 700 vehicles arriving in the most congested 15 minute period. So with these two pieces of information, you can find PHF, right? If the traffic stream has 15% large trucks and buses and no recreational vehicle, determine the level of service. So here, there is no information of the distribution among uh, tractor, trailers, or semi, so we're just going to assume that it is 50-50, okay? So 50-50 SUT and TT. Okay, let's go forward. So we gather the input data. Lane width was 11 feet. Right shoulder lateral clearance was 2 feet. Heavy vehicle percentage, 15%. We have nine ramps upstream and downstream of the middle point of the segment. The train type is rolling and driver population is mostly dominated by uh, commuters. They are familiar with the road, so your F sub P is going to be one. So let's start with estimating the free flow speed. The equation that we have is 75.4 minus F sub LW minus F sub LC minus 3.22 into TRD into the uh, to the power of 0.84. So what is our F sub LW? We know that the lane width is 11 feet. So we have a value of 1.9. 
for the lateral clearance, the obstruction is two feet away from the right shoulder. So we are at this point and we have three lanes in each direction. So F sub LC is going to be 1.6. So let's estimate the free flow speed. TRD is going to be 9 divided by 6. We have 9 ramps in 6 miles or 1.5. So F uh, free flow speed is going to be 75.4 minus 1.9 minus 1.6 minus 3.22 into 1.5 to the power of 0.84. The free flow speed here is 67.4. What we usually do is that we round the free flow speed to the nearest five mile per hour increment. So here the nearest is 65 miles per hour and we assume that our free flow speed is 65 miles per hour. So let's determine the flow rate. V sub P is equal to V divided by PHF into N, into F sub HV, into F sub P, PHF, or peak hour factor, you find it by, you find it by dividing your hourly volume by 15 minute maximum volume into four. So that is 2300 divided by 700 into four. The value that you have is gonna be 0.8 to one. That is your peak hour factor. N is given, we have six lanes total, three lanes per direction. F sub P is one and E sub P is three because you have a rolling train. Okay, let's determine F sub H V. We know that we are on a rolling Train, so, e sub, so E sub T is equal to 3. We need to determine F sub HV. We know that percentage of heavy vehicle is 0.15 and P sub R or percentage of RVs is 0. So F sub HV is going to be equal to 1 divided by 1 plus PT into ET minus 1. If you plug all the numbers in, we get a number that is equal to 0.769. That is going to be our F sub HV. Now we need to go and determine the flow rate. V sub P is equal to V divided by PHF into N into F sub HV into F sub P or 2300 divided by 0.821 or our peak hour factor divided by 3 number of lanes divided by 0.769 this is our f sub hv divided by 1 which is our f sub p you get you get 12 14.3 passenger cars per hour per lane we just round it up to 12 15 passenger cars per hour per lane so now you have V sub P, we need to determine speed. To do so, we need that our V sub P is 12.15 and our free flow speed is 65. So we are on this curve. Let's go from 12.15 up until we hit this curve. So you see that we, had hit, we, had, we have hit the curve before it Bends, so our speed is going to be equal to free flow speed here. So it's going to be equal to 65 miles per hour. Okay, so now we need to determine density by dividing uh, the analysis flow rate by speed. Analysis flow rate is equal to 1215. We divide that by the speed, which happens to be equal to free flow speed here, which is 65. So the density is 18.7 passenger cars per mile per lane. You see that it is more than 18. So your level of service is going to be C. That is shown here. So this is pretty much the final outcome that we wanted to determine for this basic freeway segment that we went through. 
By this example, I want to conclude our discussions on Chapter 6 or Highway Capacity and Level of Service Analysis. Your midterm exam 2 is going to include everything that we covered on Chapter 5 and 6. I will be stopping here and from the next class we will start talking about signalized intersections, how to analyze them and how to find the level of service in those facilities. Have a good one.